And welcome to those who've just joined us. I know we had uh, a few come from another session, so thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Monsi Ross, and I will be the moderator for this panel this afternoon. I am the Associate Dean Education in the Faculty of Engineering and Information Sciences. So today's panel's topic is on Enabled by Engineering, celebrating International Women in Engineering Day. As I'm sure many of you are well aware, the International Women in Engineering Day is actually tomorrow. So just very um, soon after our open day. So we decided to combine the two uh, events together with a, um, a, a celebration panel today for you here. So what I would like to do is to introduce very quickly our three panellists and invite them, once I've introduced all three, invite them each to um, spend about two minutes telling us a little bit about themselves before we get started with questions. So joining us today, we have uh, Dr. Emily Yap, who is a research fellow at, in the Faculty of Engineering and Information Sciences at UOW. Uh, we also have Professor Madeleine de Troit, who is the Associate Dean of Equity, Diversity and Inclusion, also in the same faculty. And we also have our, our student, Casey Fleming. She's a current Bachelor of Engineering Honours student, majoring in Civil Engineering and minoring in Environmental Engineering. Yes. So I'd like to invite each of you now. Um, Emily, did you want to go first? Uh, yeah, so I'll go, I'll go first. Um, I think it's more about how we go into engineering. Uh, That's right. So if you could just tell us a little bit about yourselves, what made you choose the area of engineering um, that you chose and where it's taken you today? Yep. So I actually started off with uh, studying Bachelor of Material Science and Engineering. So uh, it's actually quite different to the, the area that I'm in currently. Um, and suppose why I got interested in it, because I was just simply fascinated by how things work and just so happens that it was within material science and I like the engineering part because, you know, once we understand the fundamentals, can we create some really nice and neat uh, stuff out of it too, right? Um, so can we take this maybe an environmental approach to material science, for example? Um, and then from there, after my bachelor's, I decided to continue on to do my PhD. Um, it was also material science and engineering, but it's I took a more applied approach, um, and uh, my project ended up being more to do with blending both worlds of materials engineering with X-ray physics. So creating something that a bit of a miniature X-ray generator is what I like to call it. Um, <laughs> you know, trying to downsize um, large X-ray machines for um, for mineral uh, mineral detection uh, at, at mine sites. Um, and then from there, I did a bit of a pivot again. So I, uh, I knew that I wanted a bit more industry experience, but I suppose still went into uni university, so at UW, but more of that professional um, uh, sense where I interacted with more with industries, seeing the issues that they had, coming up with, you know, what are some of the um, solutions we can come up with, uh, more into, uh, I suppose, coming up with, solutions that were um, upskilling um, themselves or looking at the digital transformation side of things, which ended up uh, bringing me back to academia as well. So looking at yeah, the digital twin side or um, digital transformation, making more informed decisions in that sense as well through data. Yeah, I think that's right. good. <laughs> Thank you, fantastic. Madeline. Uh, thanks, Monsi. Yes, um, I've been um, in engineering for a bit longer than Emily. <laughs> um, I got my Bachelor in Materials Engineering about 30 years ago. Um, I followed that with a, a, bat, a Master's of Engineering. I'm, I'm by training a Materials Engineer. I studied Metallurgical Engineering, but very similar. So I did a Master's in, in Metallurgical Engineering, followed that by a PhD. Um, and then a few years later, I decided to go back to university to do a, a, another Master's degree in Welding Engineering. So um, I really... I find welding and, and especially the combination between welding and materials extremely fascinating because when you weld something, you change the internal structure of the material and that can in turn change the properties. So we have to control the whole process to get optimal results um, in structures. Um, I've been an academic for uh, quite a long time. So I teach materials and welding at UOW at the moment. Um, I'm also the Associate Dean for Equity, Diversity and Inclusion, so I'm a passionate supporter of women in engineering. I also, um, or my portfolio also looks at in the Indigenous people, um, students and staff, um, the LGBTQ community, um, 
people with disabilities. And we're just trying to get everyone access to engineering because we need everyone's voices. Um, I'm also at the moment um, sort of diverging a bit into governance. So I'm at, at present the chair of the board of directors of Weld Australia. So um, we're looking at welding in Australia um, in general, trying to get more skills development and, and advocacy generally for, for welding and engineering. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, so I've probably got the least experience out of all of this panel. I um, am in my fifth year of uni, fifth and final year. So I guess a little bit about my journey um, growing up, going through high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I think I originally wanted to be a teacher up until I was in year 12. So um, for me, it was really um, an interest that I always had in maths and science for a really long time. I never knew what engineering was until I actually did a STEM camp for girls with the University of Wollongong. Um, and that's where I first heard about what engineering was and some of the opportunities and pathways that I could get involved in. So, um, yeah, it wasn't, I think, early entry opened and that's when I made my call for engineering. Um, again, back then I had no idea what the different pathways were, so I just went, okay, I'll, I'll select one. And the good thing about that was that I could change it um, after my first year anyway. Um, so yeah, I guess that's how I originally got into engineering, but as I said, it wasn't my dream for a, a, a long period of time. Um, so yeah, now I'm in my fifth year, so after one year full-time study, I actually got a cadetship with the local council, so with Wollongong City Council, um, and I dropped back to part-time study, so it's just added an extra year onto my degree, and I think that's just been a really great experience. If I can pass any information across to you guys would be to get any experience you can while you're studying. It's benefited my study, my study is helping with my work, and I just think it's helped me understand the different pathways and job opportunities there are out there. So um, yeah, so far really enjoying my experience and yeah, looking forward to, to expanding my career now in, in engineering after uni as well. Great, thank, thank you very much. And uh, as you can see, we have a variety of panelists here from um, very early on in their career to a little bit later on in their career and also spanning a few different um, disciplines in engineering as well, which is I think Really fantastic. I'm really looking forward to some of these questions. Um, I've got some questions to start off with that I'll be asking our panellists, but I will be asking later on for questions from the audience. So I'd like you all to start thinking now about what questions you would like to... We've got some amazing, brilliant women on the stage, the, the virtual stage. Yeah. Um, feel free to start thinking about the kind of questions you'd like to ask them. Okay, so let's just start. Uh, Madeline, I'll start with you. Um, what, made it, what motivated you to pursue a career in engineering, and in particular around how do you see it as a means to contribute to society? Uh, thanks, Monsi. Yes, um, I studied engineering in the 80s when it was fairly uncommon for, for women to study engineering. I remember when I started my studies, um, we didn't have any female lecturers, we didn't have any female role models, we didn't even have female bathrooms in the engineering building mm -hmm. back where I studied. They're there now. So, um, <laughs> It was an interesting time. I think I was motivated by the challenge, first of all. I was mm -hmm. always interested in science and mathematics. Um, and I actually ended up studying engineering because of a very good guidance counsellor. So I went for some tests and the guidance counsellor said, have you considered engineering? And I said, no, which was strange because my dad's an engineer, my uncle's an engineer, but it was just never offered as an alternative to women. Mm. Um, it's been a it's been a really good career move for me. I've I've loved every second of of my uh, my career as an engineer. Um, what well, I think what what we're trying to do is to change the narrative. A lot of people have an idea of what engineering is that it's the hard engineering, um, you know, greasing bearings and <laughs> dirty, know, digging dirty around work. the dirt. Dirty work, yeah. And it's not that anymore. I mean, that's still part of mm. part of some <laughs> some engineering, but. Um, we're trying to promote the idea that engineering is really about making a difference. Mm -hmm. as, as the human race, we're now facing some of the biggest challenges we've, we've ever faced. We have climate change, we have an aging population, we have pollution issues, and engineers will be at the forefront of solving those problems. So at UOW, for example, we, we're doing a lot of work in renewable energy. We're working on 
um, biodegradable plastics, uh, battery technology. Mm. We're designing drug delivery systems that go into the human body and deliver drugs where it's needed. Um, wearable exoskeletons for people with mobility issues. So engineering is not just about the hard stuff. It's about really making a difference mm. in people's lives. And that's the message that we want to get across that as an engineer, and especially as a woman engineer, because we need more women in engineering. We, we need the voices of women and we need women to advocate for other women in engineering. Um, so we need to get the women into engineering as well so that your voices can be heard, um, so that you can make a difference out there. Mm. Yeah, that's great. And um, I guess I'll, I'll move to the other end of the spectrum then. So Casey, as a current student in your final year, um, and someone who's already working in industry, what advice would you give to young women considering a career in engineering, but especially those who are a bit unsure or, un or hesitant? Mm, yeah, so I think building a little bit on what Madeline mentioned, there's a lot of common misconceptions about, you know, engineering is just purely maths or I need a 99 ATAR to get into engineering. And that's always what I had heard going through high school. Um, but it's just not true. Like obviously maths is a big part of engineering, but there's so much more to it and you don't need to be a 100% student to get into engineering. It's such an accessible degree and there's so many pathways to get where you want to be as well. Um, so I think the biggest thing that I would say is that you should get out there, get any experience that you can, even at an undergraduate level, you know, get involved in the STEM workshops and competitions. Um, you can do some, there's opportunities at different unis. So if you're looking at specific uni activities as well, or even work experience, there's so many companies out there that if you just give them a call and say, hey, I want to do one day, one week, whatever it is of work experience, nine times out of 10, they'll say yes, because most of them are really eager to get some young engineers, budding engineers on board. Um, and you'll find that that's the best experience. You might go out there and do something and go, oh my goodness, I absolutely hate this. And that's great because now you know, okay, maybe I want to try a different pathway instead. So any experience you can get and learning opportunities are really great. Um, I think after being in uni for five years and, and getting that experience while I'm studying as well, that's really benefited me. Um, and it just really helps you to guide your study, but also look at those career paths early on as well. Um, I think in terms of um, if you're maybe a little bit hesitant to get into engineering, I would just say jump in. Um, there's So it's not just like if you're not someone that wants to be hands on, maybe you, you want to be a little bit more office space, there's opportunities there for it. So it's not, as Madeline mentioned, it's not necessarily out getting super dirty every day if that's not what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, I think a big concern I had going into engineering was also, oh, I'm going to be the only female. It's such a male dominated field. And because it's such a learning, a, a changing culture, I think, and changing um, career as well, it can be pretty intimidating coming into it early on and very worrying. You might have a sense of um, fear of failure, I guess. And I would just say that you should take every opportunity that you have or every even learning experience, even if it is a negative one, take it as a learning opportunity and something that can help guide you a little bit. Um, in my experience at uni, I think it's so supportive. And even over the five years that I've been there, I've seen the growth in women being involved in engineering as well. So you're not alone on your journey is probably the biggest thing because I think that was my main worry as well coming into uni. Um, some of my greatest friends at the moment are also female engineers and they're in slightly different streams to me, but we've been working together so much over the last few years. So it is such a supportive field and it's a really great opportunity to, to do something that makes a difference. And I think that's one of the main reasons why I do engineering as well, because you, you see what your work is doing and the impact that it's having on the community. You know, some of the work that I do, I'll just drive around on the streets and I'll go, oh, hey, I actually helped work on this footpath or <laughs> on this, you know, shared pathway, whatever it might be. And it's really cool to see the impact that it's having on, on the local communities. And um, yeah, so I think it's just something that I would definitely recommend getting involved in. And as I said, there's that so many pathways as well. So find what works for you and do a little bit of research, see what you might be interested in and see what's out there because it's not all just one, um, you know, common 
hands-on work um, experience, I guess, there's, there's a lot of options. So definitely look into it and, and find something that you think you would be interested in doing. Right. And it's interesting to hear the contrast in your two answers there. And obviously, uh, women in engineering as a field, as a, the number of women in engineering has grown over, over the years. And mm. um, it isn't the case that there are no women in engineering. Yeah. So the, yeah. it is now the case that there are women in engineering and there is that support network. Even here at the University of Wollongong, we've got the women in STEM, the women in engineering. We've got an, a number of societies and um, events like this one where we uh, network together to ensure that everyone feels supported. So it's great to hear that, that coming through. Mm. Um, so Emily, I've got my next question for you. Um, speaking about bringing more women into engineering, what do you believe is, what unique perspectives or approaches do women bring to the field of engineering that can enhance the overall impact on society? Yeah, um, thanks for that question. And I'm glad that we actually got to see the questions ahead of time because I, I had to think about this one for a bit. Um, and, and I think part of me thinks of, oh, yeah, you know, we could go back into the typical traits that women bring of, you know, being nurturing, you know, being having more of that, I guess, maternal instincts. Um, I, and I suppose I've had the pleasure of working in you know, a majority male, male dominated teams um, and then also like uh, predominantly women uh, teams as well. And um, there's just very different perspectives, different ways of thinking. I like to think that women are more high level thinkers. Um, we see the big picture. Um, but that said, I taking a tangent on that question, it's not so much what only women bring. I think it's more about the diversity as mm -hmm. well. So it's not just gender, it's also like the culture you're from, mm -hmm. the, the um, languages you speak at home, whether you're Indigenous or not ind Indigenous, the LGBTQIA plus perspective. And considering that there's such a high demand for engineers right now, mm -hmm. um, especially in Australia, I mean, all, of, all over the world, but, um, and definitely in Australia right now, it, we need to look beyond just the 50% of population that are just men, you know, there's, there's so many avenues of diversity that we can bring in and everyone has different, um, different upbringing, different perspectives. Mm. And I think that's what makes it so unique in itself. Mm. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it's more than just what one gender or one um, mm. confine uh, that actually makes, makes problem solving um, more fun, I would say. Um, yeah, and more considerate as well. Yeah, it's interesting that you talk about diversity, and I do. Um, obviously, gender is the obvious one that we initially all go to when we're considering uh, diversity in engineering. But and that is because you know it is quite absurd to consider that if you're an engineering firm and you are designing uh, devices for the entire population, to then exclude fifty percent of that population <laughs> from the design process of those objects of those products seems a bit absurd, but you're absolutely right. It actually goes on to more than just gender. It is also about diversity of thought and um, you know, uh, points of view of life that comes from including absolutely everybody. Yeah. Okay, um, Madeline, what sort of global experiences are there if you become an engineer? Well, the good thing about studying engineering, especially at a, an accredited university like, like UAW or many of the other universities in the area is that, that because our degrees are accredited by Engineers Australia mm -hmm. and also fall under the Washington Accord, you can literally almost go anywhere in the world and your degree will immediately be mm -hmm. accepted, mm -hmm. um, which is absolutely fantastic. I, I didn't study in Australia. Mm -hmm. I've only been here for about 10 years and I was able to come in and because my degree was a Washington Accord accredited degree, I didn't have to do anything else. It was mm -hmm. just accepted. Um, so there are global opportunities. And one of the wonderful things is if you study engineering, um, there are opportunities um, through different organizations to go and work elsewhere in the world to really make a difference. So you can go to a, a developing country, for example, and work with an organization to help people on the ground. And that can be designing water delivery systems or building a school or mm -hmm. just doing something where you can act actively make a difference. And we actually have an undergraduate subject mm -hmm. um, that allow students to, to go to a developing country and, and to, um, to help the people in the communities mm. there. So um, there are lots of opportunities. You can literally go almost anywhere in the world mm. with your degree, um, whether it's in a developing country or a developed country, 
um, get that international experience, find out how people are doing engineering in other places, and then also make the difference because that's that's what it re it's really about. Mm. We want to make a difference to people's lives. So you're talking about mm. the humanitarian engineering that's something right. that is offered. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's really interesting to hear the thread in a lot of these answers about helping society. Mm -hmm. We often compare ourselves to professions such as maybe becoming a doctor mm -hmm. and, and, or becoming other types of um, professions. Mm -hmm. And the reality is a doctor can help one person at a time. They can help the person that's in front of them or on their surgical table. But when you go to Rwanda and you, um, you know, help bring potable water to an entire community of people. How many people are you helping there? If you are a biomedical engineer who designs a pacemaker that goes into the chests of hundreds of thousands of people, how many people are you helping there? So I think part of our issue is around getting uh, word out there that when, you, when you're an engineer, you're, what you're doing is you're making the world a better place and you're helping untold numbers of people. Um, you might just not be looking into the whites of the eyes of the people who you're helping. And that's, it's really interesting to hear that come through in all of you. Yeah. Um, so Casey, tell us a little bit about your study of engineering. Uh, what have you enjoyed most about your degree here at the University of Wollongong? Mm, yeah, I think the thing I've enjoyed the most is just the diversity in the degree and the amount of opportunities that you get. Um, you know, it's not just sitting in a lecture theatre every day. I've had subjects where I've you know, done practicals or laboratories or computer labs. So there's every semester I'm always hands-on in, in some shape, way, shape or form, I think. Um, and I just think that, you know, I've been out on site and been able to do some geology excursions or down to a wastewater treatment plant. I think that, that opportunity to be hands-on as well has been really helpful um, everyone learns differently, but I know for me, I'm, I'm more of a physical learner. If I hear the theory, it doesn't always sink in. So I think, you know, having that, that practical side of it as well has really helped in understanding and applying what I'm learning. Um, another thing that I've really enjoyed is just the amount of support in, in the degree. I think working with such like-minded people and other people that are really interested in engineering has been so fun and exciting. And I think I've learned the most from a lot of the group projects and group work that I have done. Um, you, you kind of feed off other people as well and you get to see the perspectives of others and it, it gives you a new, new idea or new way of thinking towards engineering, I guess. So um, that's been a, a huge part of it. And I think especially faculty support as well, you know, they tell you when you come into uni that it's going to be very independent. It's not like school. And yes, that's true. You're not going to be always followed up for assignments and things like that. But I think the support you get, especially when you're solving problems and you're not sure about things, is huge. Um, you're not ever going to be alone. You've got peers that will always support you. Um, it's so great to work, work with others on your degree. Um, but there's always support from, from the faculty as well. So I think overall it's just been such a great great degree and plenty of really good experiences as well. So, um, yeah, I can't, can't really fault it, to be honest. I've, I've really great enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> doing education. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> Look, and one, uh, I've been to a number of these sorts of open days and one of the most common questions I get from uh, Year 11 and 12 students is, what's the difference between science and engineering? So it's mm. great to hear you talk mm. about that applied knowledge and that yeah. applied problem solving. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I vaguely recall a saying, and I apologise, I can't remember who it was that said it, said science is the study of the world as it is. Mm. Engineering is the study of the world as it could be. Mm. So the whole purpose of an engineer is to look at a river and say, I can build a bridge over that. The scientists will tell us all about how that river is flowing. They'll tell us about gravity so we know to make sure our bridges don't fall. And So the science, science we need the scientists as engineers. It's very important that we have scientists. Mm. Um, but the engineers take that knowledge and then apply it to solve a problem. That apl applied um, process that you were talking about is so crucial. Mm. Um, Emily, uh, just, I guess, reflecting on your own experiences, what advice or insights would you give um, young women entering the field of engineering today? Yeah, so that's a good question as well. I, thinking about the pathways I've taken so far and especially the number of pivots that I've had and how I um, eventually got into engineering. Um, I think 
for me, I was driven by um, wanting to learn how the world works, mm -hmm. um, but also driven by, you know, wanting, wanting to make a difference in society, wanting to make, um, you know, make it easier for us to live, um, and, you know, also hitting all those sustainability goals. Now we're talk talking a lot about like clean energy. We want to make sure that we're uh, sustaining, um, you know, for generations and generations as well. Um, and for me, I think it's, um, and this is something that I've been reflecting on recently as well. And part of it is um, asking questions. So being inquisitive, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, wanting to learn from that, learning from learning from doing, uh, observing, mm. yeah, you know, experiencing it. Because you talked about like having that practical side of things. So I mean, when I was doing my PhD, I didn't realize that I would have to learn from mechanical engineers or electrical engineers on how to build prototypes. Right, mm. thinking about the environmental conditions that my prototype would sit in as well, mm -hmm. and I. I've um, inherited a lot of those skills and I'm still learning from different fields of engineering now. So don't, don't feel like you're going to be boxed into mm. that one stream of engineering mm -hmm. um, because there's actually a lot more than, you know, mechanical, mining, environmental, um, like they all blend all together and they mm. all have to work together as well. Um, and then I think the last one is having fun. I, I like to have that. Enjoy what you're doing. Um, and don't be afraid to, to test things out. Like you're, you're not going to learn until you maybe like, you know, you fall down and you got to pick yourself up. And um, mm. that, that would be my takeaway and how I've gotten to this point so far. Excellent. <laughs> And I love to hear you talk about that cross-pollination between the different mm -hmm. types of engineering. Um, it's probably one of the reasons why I think the common first year works so well. Not only does it, um, isn't, it's great for students who don't know which major they want to do, but even those students who come in saying, oh, Madam, I'm going to be a mechanical engineer. Yeah, but have a look at this electrical. Have a look at this civil. Have a look at, because actually when you graduate and you become a mechanical engineer, you're going to have to work with electrical engineers. Mm. So you're going to have to know a little bit at least about what they do. You're going to have to work with um, structural engineers. You're going to have to work with whoever. So at least find out a little bit what, about what the other engineers uh, do as well. Um, Madeline, um, so this is sort of a little bit on what um, uh, Emily was talking about there, but what personal attributes do you um, think are the most important to help you thrive as a woman in engineering, in the sector, um, in industry, on site, on location? What are the sort of personal attributes you think are important to have? Well, just following up from something that Emily said, I think curiosity is probably one yes. of the most important mm. ones. Because as engineers, as Emily said, well, we're always trying to find out how things work mm -hmm. and how to make them better. And that requires mm. a certain amount of curiosity. So you have to wonder about the world and you have to wonder about the things you see and always try and come up with ways of improving and changing things to make it better for not just for the industry, but for society as a whole. Mm. Um, so I think when it comes to attributes, first of all, I think I can probably summarize and say, find your passion, find your voice and find your tribe. So find your passion because when you, when you work in a field that you're passionate about, it will always be fun. You'll mm -hmm. always enjoy what you're doing. You're always going to be making an impact. Mm -hmm. And just be aware of the fact that that may change. So my passion now is not exactly the passion I had when I was a student. So as you learn through the years and you keep growing and evolving as an engineer and as a human being, your interests are going to change and that's fine. Keep learning. Don't stagnate. Don't mm -hmm. think that if you study mechanical engineering now, you're going to be a mechanical engineer for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. um, so keep growing. Find your voice. Be confident. Um, when you finished your engineering studies, you have the skills and you have the knowledge and the experience to make a difference. Just believe in yourself. Mm. Um, because as I mentioned earlier, you're going to need to be advocates. You're going to have to advocate for clean energy, mm. um, for uh, support services. You're going to have to advocate for diversity and for other women in the industry. So find that voice, find that one thing that you're passionate about or many things. And, and speak up mm. and very importantly find your tribe because it is still a male dominated field we're looking at maybe what 18 percent female students mm. at the moment in engineering so yes you're going to be outnumbered in your classes 
But make sure that you build that network. Mm. Um, we need community around us. We need to talk to people. We need mm. um, people that we can vent to if we need to. So find that community, whether it's in university or outside university, in your workplace. Just make sure that you have people around you that you trust, that you can talk to, that you can um, brainstorm things with. Mm. So that's my advice to people coming in. Um, never, never stop learning. I mean, mm. the world is way too interesting to ever stop learning. Mm. Um, and things change so rapidly. Mm. I mean, the science evolves, the technology evolves. Mm. So get into that habit of lifelong learning. Um, don't stop studying if that's something that you're interested in. And always, always just keep that curiosity about the world around you. That's fantastic. I love that. Love the curiosity is the personal attribute that you highlight the most there. It's excellent. Um, so, look, I think I've asked a lot of questions from my sheet, but I'd like to open it up to more broadly. If there's any questions that people would like to ask. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for giving all your backgrounds. It's really your stories. I was just wondering, in your perspective, where do you think engineering can take you and what kind of career opportunities did you get in your course? Okay, so where can, just in case the people at home were unable to hear it, um, where can engineering take you in terms of a career? Uh, what what um, options are available? What, what options are open to you? Who would like to answer that? Hey, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, from the uh, women in engineering that I've seen, or engineers in general, um, you know, we had two years ago, was it last year? Two years ago, when we had Marine, Fru Marine last Furuki. Year. Yes, last year, Furuki who's a green senator, um, and we found out that, yeah, she used to be an engineer, now mm. she's a politician, she's mm. advocating um, from the engineer's perspective as well. Um, I've seen women go and start up their own business, mm. uh, so you can be an engineer and a businesswoman at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've thought you can go into really anything, right? Because mm. what you take at the end of the day when you, build, when you go into engineering is not just the technical skills, it's also that soft skills it's that creative problem solving mm. critical problem solving um communication that's such a big one that i think we shouldn't take for granted mm. of as well and so you could be anything you could go into commerce so uh, you could go into you know there's engineering and law that we were just mm -hmm. talking about earlier mm -hmm. so having the, that perspective of the engineering and being able to use that technical knowledge to um in a way, a different form of uh, contributing back to society, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other answers to that? Well, I can just emphasize what Emily said. I mean, the sky's the limit. Mm. Um, it all depends on you, what you are interested in. Mm -hmm. um, we have many engineers who go into consulting, mm -hmm. into business, finance. I mm -hmm. have uh, someone who studied with me who is now working for a pension fund or super mm. fund. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much anywhere because the, the the skills that you learn as an engineer translate very well into mm -hmm. a whole range of different industries. Mm -hmm. um, but it depends on you and what you're interested in. And I think engineering really is an enabling profession. Mm. So, so as an engineer, yes, you might have a specialty in electrical, you might have a specialty in civil, but you can then go and work in a myriad of sectors. You don't just work in an electrical engineering or a civil engineering company you can work as an electrical engineer for anywhere the mines or uh, I had we had a, um, a gentleman at the alumni this morning who um, as a civil engineer worked for an aged care facility so it uh, it doesn't it's actually an enabling profession and if the question so I can't remember the exact question but if the question you asked is what opportunities are available to you as a woman in engineering they're exactly the same as available to a man in engineering. Yes. Mm. That's what the, that's what the uh, that's what the correct answer to that is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No worries. Um, yes, there. How do you? What would be your best tips to managing like work, study, having an outside life? Yeah, so I'll just repeat the question for those at home, just in case, because I'm not sure how well the microphone is picking up. But yeah, the question for Casey, who is our current student, is um, what are the tips for balance, uh, work-life balance between study work and you know enjoying yourself mm, yeah so I think the biggest thing for me has been to make sure that I do leave time for everything um I try and schedule if I can and you know plan days or weeks and whatnot but I am not the type of person that will plan something to the minute or to the second so I think the biggest 
piece of advice I can give for that is to make sure you are factoring in time, even if it is just an hour or two for sleep or for hobbies, whatever it is. Um, I think making sure you do have that time to, you know, wind down when you need to. It's been the biggest thing that I've learned over the last few years. I think initially I had gone, no, my whole life is work and uni and that's it. But it's so easy to burn yourself out by doing that. So I think realising that, you know, your own time, your hobbies, the things you enjoy are just as important as your study and your work was a big, big realisation for me. And when you can understand that, it makes it so easy to then, you know, allocate and not feel bad for allocating time to just relaxing, just winding down a little bit. Um, I think also having that communication. So if you are working and studying, making sure that you are saying, hey, boss or hey, uni lecturer, whoever it is, these are my work commitments, these are my study commitments, just making you aware. And when they hear that, if you're working in engineering and studying engineering, your lecturers, your tutorial, whoever they are, they're always understanding of that. They know what it's like to be working as well. And so nine times out of 10, they'll give you that extension or that extra time to do whatever it is you need to do. So just make sure you have that open communication as well between the person that's looking after you at work and, and studying as well. I think I found that's been really beneficial and the best way to get around organising all of my, my work and my study. So, yeah. And, and it, I think it's actually worth pointing out because um, you mentioned earlier you're in your fifth year. So you're taking five years to do a four-year mm -hmm. degree and that's so that you could insert the mm. work, which I don't know how many hours a week you work at the yeah. council, but yeah. whatever the number about. So... Um, something to be aware of is that university study is very flexible. It's not like mm -hmm. high school where I am now a year nine student, I am now a year 10 student, I am now a year 11 student. Um, you can actually come in and do, we've got students on 50% load, 75% load, 100% load. Um, and you're, because you're able to enroll in the subjects that you, you know, the, the number of subjects that you choose, you can literally enroll in four subjects, one semester, two subjects the next, three the one after that, and then take a leave of absence after that because you want to travel. So it's very flexible. Obviously, if you want to complete in four years standard time, then you must be full-time four subjects per semester. But that's really, obviously, for the best case scenario, maybe you're living at home and don't have yeah. the kinds yeah. of you know, cost of living pressures that many people obviously do. But yeah, so just be aware, a take home is that university study is very, very flexible. Yeah. I've got a question. Yes, down the back. You mentioned that you were fifth year, and you were sort of working four years. Studying mm -hmm. and is that something beneficial studying and working together or when you finish a degree, then you look for, which is sort of what's your advice? So, it's an opportunity to work together or just finish your so, the, so the question for those back home is um, whether KCC sees a benefit in this um, uh, four-year degree over five years to pick up some work and do work and study simultaneously or is it better to finish your uh, degree and then look for work afterwards? So did you want to answer that, Casey? Yeah, so I think... I'm now coming towards the tail end of it. I've found that it was the best decision I ever made. I think although I am pushed back one year than, than I originally was, I don't feel behind at all. I think that was my main worry going into it was, oh, I'm going to be graduating a year later. It's going to put me behind. But I think in actual fact, it's putting me ahead, to mm -hmm. be honest. Like I'm graduating uni with four years of experience mm -hmm. that a lot of other graduates don't have and have no idea what the industry is like. So I think in, in that, on that side of things, it hasn't been a regret at all. And I, if anything, I highly do recommend it. Um, I think in terms of benefiting each other, definitely your study helps your work, your work helps your study. I found uni so much easier now that I've got that experience from work. And there's also a lot of support from work. All of the engineers that I'm with working at the council have been through uni at some stage. So if I'm ever really stuck on a concept or a problem, I can take it to them and they will be able to basically be an, a tutor for me in a way and, and help me out. So it's, it's been really helpful. And I think in, in the same way, what I'm learning at uni and that theoretical background has helped me apply that to my work as well and make sure that what I'm doing is thorough and, and has enough detail. So um, it has been really good, really complimentary for each other. And that's why I tell anyone that can get that experience undergrad while you can, because now I know what that side of engineering is like as well. And 
there's so many career pathways that I had no idea about until I started working. So it's now guided my decisions for what I want to do after uni as well. So I would highly recommend it if you can do it, definitely. And I love your quote. I'm going to be using your quote. I thought it was going to set me back, but I've yeah. found that it's actually <laughs> put me ahead. And that is yeah, so true. You've got graduating yeah. with four years of work experience mm. into, a, um, into a graduate market, which mm. is amazing. Yeah. Mm. Cadetships that we have with Ansto and Blue That's right. We have a number of scholarships and cadets with a range of um, both, you know, companies like Blue Scope or Ansto government agencies that allow for that study and uh, work combination. So we certainly recommend it. And like I said, the university system is quite flexible with allowing students to spend uh, time off on study, uh, time off on work um, by reducing their study load. It's very, very easy to do. Lots of mm. students are doing it. All right, we're nearing the end of our session. Just uh, thought if there's uh, another question available. Yes, down the back. I think maybe please just answer this a bit, but this is sort of for the whole panel. Can, are there any education, your engineering education or work experience has benefited or translated into the rest of your life? That, like, okay. So the question is, um, has there been any case or can you elaborate where your education, your engineering education and or work experience has translated to elsewhere in your life? So to other aspects of your life, I'm guessing? Yeah. That's an interesting question. Yeah, yeah. 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 it stumps all three of them. They're all thinking about... I think for me, it's so interwo interwoven, my, yeah. my life and, and what I do for a living. Mm. Um, that it's almost difficult to separate it. Um, so yes, engineering has has sort of diffused into all aspects of my life. That's mm. that's what I I live. Not oh, oh, that's maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I think it does teach you an objective way of looking at the world yeah. and seeing a problem. So for my so I'm an engineer too. So for <laughs> my personal experience, the number of times in my personal life where I have done something a specific way because I knew it was the best to achieve yeah. the best outcome, someone turned to me and said, oh, yeah, there's the engineer at practice. So, mm. so yes, I do actually think it's – I'm getting a mm, – yeah. So I think engineering teaches you a way of thinking that breaks down difficult problems into smaller problems, which you then systematically resolve to get to an end point. So I feel like that's what engineering yeah. gives you and that is absolutely useful in real life. Yeah, and then yes. I think the other part is making more informed decisions mm. as well. Data-driven. Yeah, yes. not just data-driven. I think just understanding, uh, okay, maybe this might be a little bit contentious, but like, you know, say the, the wind farm that's going out in the in the. Mm -hmm. uh, on the at the shore, right? That's so awesome. you know you've got the you've got both sides of you know mm. we shouldn't and then we should. So mm. you know actually having that um, this kind of knowledge can help you understand from both perspectives mm. before making your own uh, final mm. decision, right? And this doesn't I mean that's just one case, but there's many many things you can look at, mm. right? Um, so uh, yeah, for me definitely what you were saying, and also just being becoming more informed. And also um, uh, raising awareness to other people as well. So you've got your own perspective. This is how you understand it. And then sharing that with others as well. I think that's such a powerful mm. thing that we don't, as um, engineers and scientists, we don't do enough of. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we, we know so much information. It's such an opportunity, such a gift to actually share that as well. Because mm -hmm. we want to make sure everyone's making the the, the best decision that they feel is right for them too. Mm. Um, yeah. And I feel like engineering skills also translate across to business acumen quite yes. well yeah, as well. Definitely. I remember, and I apologize that I can't remember the exact source, but there was a survey maybe five to 10 years ago of the, Fortune, the top Fortune 500 companies and looking at their CEOs. So they looked, they took all the five top 500 companies, um, looked at their CEOs and had a look what was their first college degree? So their first university degree. And the highest number wasn't actually business or commerce. It was actually engineering. Mm. Engineering had something like 35% of these Fortune 500 CEOs had done engineering as their primary degree. 
Um, and then maybe they topped it up with an MBA or something like that. Fair enough. Um, and then the next closest was maybe 10 points behind, maybe 20 something percent, which was a commerce business degree. So I do think engineering translates over into various parts of, of, of your life. Yeah. It also teaches you teamwork because as an engineer, mm, yes. you always be working in a team of people because we can't do everything well. So mm. you, you team up with, if you're a mechanical engineer, with electrical engineers or environmental engineers to solve mm. a problem. And that also translates really well into the rest of your life because it, it means you can talk to people, you can get different perspectives and mm. you know combine everything into solving problems. Mm. Mm. And I think on top of teamwork as well, just people skills in general. Yeah. Like yeah. I came out of high school the shyest person you've ever met and now I can just pick up the phone and call clients without even thinking and I have that confidence to have the conversations with people I've never met before. So those interpersonal skills, they really tend to improve and, and you become a more knowledgeable but confident person. Mm. And Yeah, I've just found that to be really beneficial as well. I don't think I've ever had a student thank us for all the oral presentations we've done. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Glad to hear what's working. Working. All right. Are there any other questions? I think we are a little bit out of time here. Um, look, thank you all for coming. It's been a lovely chat. Thank you, those of you who have joined us online. Um, and so, yes, it's been, I'm very grateful to see uh, the room full of people. And like I said, I'm, I'm sure there are people online watching us as well. Um, it's been a great panel session, some really interesting topics discussed. Um, feel free to come and enjoy afternoon tea. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.